the year our prayers and they present these prayers to Christ, the one mediator. We, we have these examples in uh, the book of Revelation chapter five, verse eight and chapter eight, verse three. These saints in heaven are aware of what goes on on earth. They pray with us and they offer our prayers in the form of incense to God. Good day to you, and it is my singular honor to welcome you to the maiden edition of Ask a Catholic Priest. My name is Dr. Emmanuel Egwai, and with me today is Reverend Father Chinaka Mberi, a Nigerian priest currently on mission in Brazil. He is the founder and spiritual director of OCCF, a Catholic community forum domicile both on WhatsApp and Telegram with the sole aim of strengthening the faith of Catholics. And today we shall be talking about a very common topic and that is the Catholic Church, praying to saints and angels, invoking their assistance. Please join me with a virtual round of applause as we welcome to the stage, Reverend Father Chinaka. Greetings, Dr. Emmanuel, and thanks for having me. Yes, you are welcome. So we'll just go straight into the questions while we listen to your take on this matter. So now, the Catholic Church has been known to pray to saints, to invoke the intercession of saints, and even angels in our daily lives. So why do we do this? The Catholic Church invokes the intercession of angels and saints because we believe that we form one body in Christ and with the sole belief that it is necessary that the strong should support the weak. So we meet these our elder brothers in faith and ask for their prayers just as I can ask you to pray for me and you also could ask me to pray for you. And we believe that death cannot separate us from the love of Christ. Even in death, we are still united because we form one body as the letters of the Hebrews would tell us that we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. And if we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses, these witnesses must be alive in order to interact with us in the spiritual realm. So we are one together in the communion with Christ. So asking them for prayers would not be a bad thing because we, we are simply asking them to join us in praying to the one mediator. Okay, okay. Thank you so much for that. Um, I did not get the verse right. You said Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. Then that okay. of chapter 13, verse 7 speaks of remembering those who have brought the word of God to us. And as we contemplate on the aspects of their lives, we are meant to imitate their faith. Okay, okay. Now, another common question is, well, now we understand that we are united with them, death has not separated us. And these ones, they represent the cloud of witnesses as um, written by the author of the letter to the Hebrews. Now, Mary and the saints, why we pray to them and we ask for their intercession? Are we in any way saying that these saints are omnipresent? That is, are they omnipresent everywhere just as we attribute to God? Thank you for the question. Only God is omnipresent and uh, to him alone uh, belong the three basic qualities, uh, the omniscient, uh, omnipresent, and um, omnipotent. Yeah. Now, um, in relating with the saints, we, we understand, and uh, still hanging around that very verse in the 12th chapter of Hebrews, that we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses, and those in the afterlife are not bound by the restriction of time and space. So if they're not bound by the restriction of time and space, we know that we feel their presence. We know that they are with us. Just as somebody who uh, misses a, a parent and after some time, it feels that I, I can so feel the presence of my dad all around me. In as much as he's dead, 
I feel his presence all over. So we, we, there's a way we feel uh, these are brothers and sisters who have departed from this life or those still united with us because they are always around us. They are these witnesses, okay? They are alive in Christ. In Christ, there is no death. Hence, they are alive and they are witnesses before us, around us, all over us. Whenever we pray, they know our prayers, they hear our prayers, and they present these prayers to Christ, the one mediator. We, we have these examples in uh, the book of Revelation chapter 5, verse 8, and chapter 8, verse 3. These saints in heaven are aware of what goes on on earth. They pray with us, and they offer our prayers in the form of incense to God. Okay, thank you so much for contributing some scriptural backings to these statements. Now, just to hold you up on what you said, among the last statements you made, that they present our prayers to God. Now, does that mean that these saints are now taking the place of Jesus in terms of mediatorship? There is only one mediator between God and man the man Christ Jesus. The mediatorship of Christ or the mediator role of Christ is so unique that it belongs to him alone. And he is the mediator of the new covenant because no other being was worthy to take up the scroll and to open its seals. And Christ did that. And as such, it was accorded all glory and honor. Taking the scroll and to open its seals was embedded in the mystery of our salvation, in the mysterious work he wrote for us, the salvation we gain through his death and resurrection. And that is why he remains the mediator between man and God. So asking my brother or my sister, whether alive here on earth or alive in heaven to pray for me does not in any way hinder or um, affect the mediator role of Christ, because this person does not answer my prayer. It takes my prayer to Christ, who is that uh, mediator, and Christ hears the prayer. So what they do is to, um, they know what we are passing through, okay, they, they, hear, they, they hear us, they, they can see us, and they offer these our prayers before Christ in the form of incense. Okay, okay, so they are not hindering the role of Christ as the sole mediator between man and God. They are just like our brothers here on earth when we say, oh, pray, oh, pray for me, I have an examination, oh, pray for me. Our brothers on earth do not have the power to answer prayers. So this same role that we try to replicate with our brothers physically here on earth is the same that we ask the saints to help us do in heaven. Right. I believe that's a correct summary. You're right, you're right. Okay, okay. So. Thank you so much, Father Chinaka. Um, November 1st is the solemnity of all saints, one of the solemnities in the Catholic Church. And on that day, we remember the saints. And on other days of the, of the liturgical year, various saints have their various memorials, feasts, and what have you. So as we continue to pray through the saints, is there any other thing you would like us to know Concerning praying to the saints, praying through the saints, as well as our mother Mary. Yeah, praying to the saints or praying through the saints is the surest way of having our prayers answered. I'm not saying that when you pray directly to Christ, the one mediator between God and man, your prayers will not be answered. Definitely, you pray to Christ, you have the faith, your prayers will be answered. After all, the Holy Mass is a prayer offered by Christ himself to the eternal father. And that is the highest of all prayers. In the Holy Mass, we are not offering uh, prayers uh, to a, a particular saint. We, we offer this, this prayer, this very Mass is Christ himself offering it as the priest and victim to his eternal father. Although at the Holy Mass, the angels and saints are there with us, praying with us and um, asking for God's intervention on our behalf. Just, you know, Christ makes us understand that the, the holy angels, the guiding angels of uh, the little ones are always in the presence of God the Father, contemplating his face. We have this in Matthew chapter 18, verse 12. It says, see that you do not despise these little ones, because they are angels 
in heaven are always contemplating the face of my father in heaven. So what does it mean for somebody to contemplate or to look up to the face of someone? Just like uh, we have a, um, a um, let us use a dog for instance. A dog, you have your dog and your dog stares and stares at you. When your dog stares at you, you understand that uh, the dog is asking for something. It's asking for your attention. It needs you. So when the angels, when our guardian angels are contemplating the face of God, our Father in heaven, they are asking for his attention on us. Okay? So our eyes are on the Lord, our God, till he shows us his mercy. That is how the angels in heaven continue to contemplate the face of God in heaven till it shows us his mess. So beloved friends, do not uh, be afraid to ask for the intercessions of the saints in heaven. Their prayers are efficacious because the same holy book makes us realize that the prayer of the righteous man is efficacious before the sight of God. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Father Chinaka, for that concluding statement. And now I, I believe that some of us may still have questions I would like answered. So you are free to leave your comments in the comment section. And in subsequent editions of Ask a Catholic Priest, we would be providing answers to these questions. So thank you once again, Reverend Father Chinaka, for joining us. And we hope to have you on subsequent editions as we talk about matters that concern our Catholic faith moral discussions, missions, family life, and trending issues in our society. Thank you once again. Thank you very much, Dr. Emmanuel. This is indeed our first edition, and it's coming out good. And my dear brothers and sisters, expect more from us as you have heard from our moderator. Uh, this is what we are going to be doing from time to time. If you have a question, if you have, uh, you want us to treat something, you can also leave your comments in the comment section and we treat it. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell to be the first person to receive the notification whenever we post a new video on this channel. So we don't have to send you the link, all right? Remain blessed. Thank you.